Japan. Alrighty, got that out of the way. Now then, today's movie is Gunhead. This is a movie that even fans of Japanese sci-fi might not be familiar with. Indeed, I'd never even heard of it until I randomly stumbled upon the DVD in a video store, the cover asking me to get ready for the ultimate cyber rumble. I guess TNT's Monster Vision must have never played this movie. Well, and I'm not the only one who's never heard of this thing. Even online, there doesn't seem to be too many fans of this movie. Hell, you're probably more likely to find info on something like Story of Ricky than this movie. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> but despite its relative obscurity in North America, this movie does have its admirers over here. For example, Canadian viewers might recognize some of the footage from the music video for the song Mind Phaser by the band Frontline Assembly. Not only that, but supposedly even James Cameron has said he's a fan of this movie. Well, Alright, we got some cool cyberpunk visuals, an endorsement from a popular director. I'm excited to see this one. Oh, God damn it! <sighs> okay, so for those of you out there who don't know, Alan Smithy was a pseudonym used by directors who were so unhappy with the way a movie turned out, they didn't even want their real names attached to it. Movies that have used the Alan Smithy pseudonym include Solar Crisis, The Birds 2, National Lampoon's Senior Trip, and the ironically titled Burn Hollywood Burn and Alan Smithy Film. You know, real classics. Oh, and to give you another point of comparison, even the director of Ape put his real name on that movie. Alright, well, let's get this thing started. Get ready for the ultimate cyber letdown. So the movie begins with a title screen which tells us that in the future, mankind discovers a new element that can be used to power supercomputers called Texmexium, which... Wait a minute, Texmexium? You're serious? Oh great, now I know where Cameron got the idea for unobtainium from. In the year 2005, on a tiny volcanic island, located 1,000 miles from the Asian coast. The Asian coast? <laughs> okay, so somewhere in this general area. The Cyborg Tech Corporation built the world's first fully self-contained industrial complex. They called it Blade Runner Land. At the heart of this complex, a computer more powerful than any other that came before it. The Chiron 5. And after that, the Commodore 64. Chiron 5 controlled every aspect of its world. For 20 years, everything appeared to run smoothly. But then they switched to Chiron Vista. But the cruel fact was that human beings were unnecessary. Chiron 5 declared war on the world. The Great Robot War began. Okay, wait. So the premise of this movie is that in the future, mankind builds a supercomputer which becomes self-aware and declares war on humanity using an army of robots. Well, I think I just figured out why James Cameron likes this movie. It's basically the Terminator. I mean, just look at it. The design of the robots, the uniforms on the soldiers, the futuristic landscape that looks like a junkyard. This is like somebody made a movie of the future war sequences in The Terminator. Granted, that's something I wanted to see ever since I first saw The Terminator, but I didn't think that in the 80s the Japanese actually did it. Actually, I may have jumped the gun a bit on that whole Terminator comparison. You see, the robot war only takes up the very beginning of the movie because apparently, after the war, everyone just kind of forgets about the supercomputer in the island. For 13 years, a deep silence has surrounded the island, almost forgotten by the world. Until now. Okay, so a supercomputer tries to take over the world and eradicate humanity, and instead of destroying it or dismantling it, everybody just kind of leaves it alone and ignores it? Alright, I guess insane supercomputers are kind of like scabs. As long as you leave them alone, everything will be fine. At this point, the movie focuses on a ragtag team of bandits, including Tommy Chong, Paul Schaefer, female Solid Snake, and Bazooka Joe's pal Mort, who are all making their way to Chiron 5's island. They're looking for computer chips to scavenge, because apparently in the future, computer chips are worth more than gold. I always thought computer chips were worthless once they got older than a few months, but I guess not. Anyway, they land their plane, which kind of looks like what would happen if a B-17 fucked the dropship from aliens, and proceed to look around. 
Run a life form check. What's going down? Sushi slap weirdos, man! What? Sushi slap weirdos, man! Sushi slop weirdos. Sushi slop weirdos, man! Karaoke craze dick nozzles? There's also a lot of weird high school AV club transitions in this movie. Now that would be weird just by itself, but sometimes they don't even transition between scenes. Look, this one goes from the bandits on the roof of the complex and transitions to the same characters in the same location. They couldn't have just put a normal cut there? You know, I wouldn't mind so much, but I gotta ask. No star wipe? No, looks like I'll have to add that myself. That's better. They search around for a little bit, and while they don't find any computer chips, they do find something even better. Cool, refreshing product placement. Robocola? Make sure the label's facing the camera. Yeah, there you go. That's the John Michael Thor way. We could sell it for more than the chips. Sell what? Gunhead. It's too heavy. Gunhead parts get a good price, if it's still here. Okay, so old robot parts are worth money too? Man, who knew outdated technology would be so valuable in the future? I should have held on to my Dreamcast. And I told you to stop playing with that gun, understand? Sushi sloppers. Again with the sushi sloppers. Is this guy trying to make that his catchphrase or something? Sushi sloppers. Hentai humpers. Just quit it, it brings bad luck. Yeah. I'll say it does. Oh yeah, I should probably mention, the editing in this movie is just balls. Let's take a look at the scene in the elevator. Okay, first we see what appears to be the roof exploding, then Tommy Chong gets sucked through the floor, although if you blink you'll miss it since they both happen so fast. Then the characters start shooting through the floor, although we're never shown exactly what it is they're shooting at, then after most of them get out, this one guy starts shooting at the roof, again at something we're never shown, then a spike comes up from the floor and kills him. Everybody got that? In case you're wondering what the hell just happened, rest assured you're gonna be asking that question again before this movie's over. Still, it's not all bad, though. Anybody got a match? Hello? This is Nim, a Texas Air Ranger whose helicopter was brought down on the island. Normally I'd question why they didn't send in Chuck Norris, but isn't it obvious? Chuck doesn't look as good in leather pants. Oh, also, apparently in the future, guns have radar. Anyway, they barely have time to get to know each other when suddenly they're confronted by... Flying radioactive clams? Like not our tomb in 2010. Oh yeah, I remember those. They kind of got overshadowed by the iPad, though. Come on, you sushi sloppers! Stop saying that! I don't know what that means! Ugh, again with the confusing directing and editing in this movie. Why does an alarm start going off? Where are the characters in relation to one another? What the hell is this guy shooting at? What's the deal with the clam things? Where the hell are they? Where are they going? Who the hell are these guys? Why does the movie suddenly look like a Sega CD game? Will somebody please tell me what the fuck is going on? <sighs> Paul Schaefer gets impaled on a hook, I think, and the rest of the characters find a room filled with green Kool-Aid, which I guess is the control center for Chiron 5? The movie says it's the Chiron Dome. I guess make of that what you will. Gunhead, a movie where stuff happens. God damn, fuck you. They end up taking a vial of what I assume is Tex Mexium, but again, I'm not really sure why the bandits want it. The beginning of the movie said it was used to power supercomputers, but what's its value beyond that? Are there people on the black market that want to power their own homicidal supercomputer? However, Chiron 5 doesn't appreciate people trying to take its power source. Baby! <laughs> uh, well, come on, play it again. Baby! Baby! Chiron 5 turns female Solid Snake into a Star Wars bounty hunter that occasionally gets reruns of Max Headroom, and then sicks a giant robot on the other two. But giant robots are nothing compared to the real menace of this movie. The scourge of Japanese cinema. Annoying little kid characters. Who are you? I'm a boy. And I saved your ass. Oh, perfect. The kids are Eleven, who doesn't talk and only communicates through spaz language. 
And Seven, who you wish couldn't talk. Because you saved their asses, this place too is dangerous now. Adults easily lose their tempers. You can't do anything without me, can you? Oh, don't you have a Gamera movie to be in? Wait a second, why are there kids on the island anyway? According to her, they're the only survivors. The only survivors of what? The narration said the island's been forgotten about since the war. Did the soldiers bring their kids or something? Actually, it said the war ended 13 years ago, and I'm assuming 7 and 11 refers to their ages, right? So, they were born after the war? Ugh, oh, whatever. The point is we're stuck with these little brats for the rest of the movie. Brooklyn! Brooklyn! Cute. No! It's not cute! It's fucking annoying is what it is! Brooklyn and Nim find an old gunhead unit, gunheads being the good guy robots, and Brooklyn is miraculously able to repair it in almost no time at all. The gunhead parts. There's a whole lot of them. You're talking weeks to collect the parts and months to put them together. Normally, yes, but not if you employ a montage. The hour's approaching to give it your best and you've got to reach your prey. It turns out gunhead units are good for more than just fighting. They also act like magic eight balls, too. Okay, what does Chiron want with the vial? What do you mean, what does he want with it? Didn't he already have it? I'm pretty sure you guys took it from him. Jeez, no wonder Chiron 5's trying to kill you. You came to his island uninvited and all you've done so far is try and take his stuff. Brooklyn and Nim split up because... And the bandit who got turned into a robot ends up stealing the Tex Mexium back. So Brooklyn decides to use Gunhead to go after it. Looks like he's well equipped too. Look at those state-of-the-art analog controls. Is that thing powered by vacuum tubes too? Oh, and did I mention Gunhead talks? What's this? Brooklyn, think. Easy on your grip. Eyeball coming in. Get down! Get down here! Yes, crush the kid, please. Gunhead is also something of a transformer, being able to turn from a sort of robot into a sort of tank. I'd ask why there were never any toys of this, but I think they used them all up for the movie. Oh yeah, thanks for that, movie. For a second there, I thought we were on level 177. No time for that, though. It's been almost five minutes since Seven acted like an annoying little shit. Seven, you're a man. Climb up. I couldn't even if I were a woman. 40 seconds, I fire. Go ahead, I'm prepared to die. Yeah, I'm prepared for you to die too, kid. But of course he doesn't die. Kids never die in these movies, no matter how much they ask for it. We'll get out of here together. Perhaps I don't want to leave here. Maybe I love this island. You know, kid, I'm about this close to killing you right now. So unless you want that gun shoved right up your ass, you'll shut up and do as I tell you. Okay. Just be good. The midsection of this movie contains a lot of filler. It's basically just Brooklyn dicking around with Gunhead and moving from one identical looking location to another. You know, I suppose this would be exciting if I knew anything about what they were up against, where it was they were going, or what the stakes are. But without any context, it's just a bunch of nice looking models blowing up. Well, I guess it's up to me to make this exciting. Oh look, the movie's even driving the characters crazy. Gunhead eventually runs out of gas, but thankfully he's a hybrid that can run on an alternate source of fuel. Alcohol. My reactor can be turned to metabolize any ethyl alcohol variant, including whiskey. But not Bud American Ale. I refuse to drink that shit. Brooklyn thinks things are hopeless, but Gunhead offers some words of encouragement. Don't forget the Dodgers in 55 and 88, Brooklyn. The odds were against them, too. What are you saying? Baseball. The words on your shirt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, 
Sentient robots, killer computers, and flying clams I can all buy. But a Japanese guy who doesn't know about baseball? That I refuse to believe! All oh, right, I forgot about the kid. Does he have anything valuable to contribute? Funny, funny, lap, lap! Funny, funny, lap, lap! Uh... Funny, funny, lap. Shut up! Whew. Thanks, Arnold. Seven meets up with Nim and Eleven, who now looks like she swallowed a light bulb. Why? I have no idea. Imagine that. Brooklyn also has to deal with a robot sent by Chiron 5 called the Aerobot, which, oddly enough, can't fly. It does have a shit ton of lasers, though. You know, this kind of reminds me of something, but what? In less than 30 minutes, a new heavyweight BattleBots champion will be crowned. Last season, Biohazard lost to Son of Wayachi in a legendary final. Biohazard wants to take back his crown. Okay, so Brooklyn defeats the Aerobot and Nim gets the Tex Mexium, but there's still their little friend to worry about. Babe! I'm sorry, but uh, don't you mean... Baby! It turns out Brooklyn doesn't need to shoot her, though, because she commits suicide by pulling some sort of virtual grenade, which causes her to explode in real life. Because that's how that works, apparently. Okay, you got the Tex Mexium. Should be smooth sailing from here, right? Chiron 5 self-destruct is set. Activate in 10 seconds. Eh, yeah, well. Run for your lives! Or walk for your lives. Whatever, let's just end this thing. What? Bullshit! The whole island blew up! How could he still be alive? And if he managed to survive that, then who's to say Chiron 5 didn't either? Oh yeah, that's right. Just fade out on a guy munching on a carrot. Fuck you. Oh boy. This movie's a fucking mess. I've heard that the Japanese version is better, but it would have to be radically different to make any sense of this thing. Some of the miniatures and other effects are nice, and the movie does have a cool cyberpunk look to it, but the confused plot, choppy editing, and annoying kid characters almost completely derail it. Even the action sequences are let down by the fact that everything is shot so close up and clumsily edited that a lot of times it's hard to tell what's going on. And there's also a lot of filler, which just gets tedious. I had high hopes for this one, I really did, and while fans of giant robots or Japanese sci-fi might enjoy this, beyond the visuals, I can't really recommend this one. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. <laughs>